Welcome to Madison Avenue Christian Church. Whether you're worshiping here in person or online from home, we are so glad that you are here for the third Sunday in Lent. If you are visiting with us this morning, we ask that you fill out the perforated part of our bulletin and place it in the offering plate so we can get to know you a little better. This past Monday, March 6th, our organist and choir director, Jimmy Leach, submitted his resignation. He indicated that this past Sunday, March 5th, would be his last. 
He had previously arranged for this week to be a vacation week with Brent Ludwig filling in. The search committee has put together interim plans to fill the positions until a permanent replacement can be found. Questions and discussion will be a part of the next board meeting, which is Sunday, March 26th. Yes, the board meeting date has moved from the 19th to the 26th, so please submit your reports by Thursday, March 23rd. Every Sunday during Lent, one of our elders will be providing the meditation, and each week there will be an insert in the bulletin with a brief reflection or devotion for us to ponder during the week. This reflection will also be posted on our website and our Facebook page. A reminder that our elevator is temporarily out of service, and unfortunately we don't really have a good timeline of when it will be repaired, but optimism can come sometimes work because the repairman was here on Friday, and he thinks we can maybe order a part, so everyone cross your fingers. <laughs> but until then, we apologize for the inconvenience and appreciate your patience. Save the date for our free community health fair and cookout on Monday, March 27th from 5 to 7 p.m. You can see the insert in the bulletin this week for more information. We are excited to partner with the Nurse Advocacy Center for the Underserved at Northern Kentucky University and other health vendors for this event. The Capital Campaign Council had its first meeting this past Tuesday. It was really exciting to be a part of this meeting as the room was full of enthusiasm, creativity, and joy as we worked together to focus on the future of and the upcoming capital campaign. It also didn't hurt that we had a delicious fried chicken dinner before the meeting. The members of the council are Sherry Calderelli as chair, Paula Alfin, the financial secretary, Bruce Kittner, advanced pledge chair, Karen Bruin, worship chair, Sharon Kittner, fellowship chair, Linda Mauser, Calling Chair, Karen Truman, Publicity and Promotion, Pam Manker, Pledge Advisor, Don Manker, Moderator, Dan Weeks, Vice Moderator, Simon as Senior Minister, and myself as Staff. The group meets again this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Mark your calendars for a breakfast on Palm Sunday, which is April 2nd, during Sunday school starting at 9.30 a.m. Bill Black will be cooking a delicious breakfast, and it'll be a great morning full of fellowship and wonderful food, and I hope to see all of you there. With that, let us enter into worship together.
Please be seated. And Jesus said to the woman at the well, drink of the water that I give you and you will not thirst again. To which she said, give me that water so that I will not thirst no more. Let us pray. of every blessing, the source of living water, the one who leads us besides still waters, the one who restores our soul. We too come before you this morning saying, give us the living water. Feed us till we want no more. Bread of heaven, come among us so that we would not thirst nor hunger no more. We seek after so many things that would satisfy us, but we know that unless you are the source of what we receive, nothing would truly satisfy us. So we ask, grant us your presence, shower us with your love, and even if you should give us what we ask, we do not have the wisdom to use it in ways that would glorify your name and fill the void in our lives by being a blessing to others. So we ask that your spirit would lead us. Point us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Fill this house of worship with your presence, O oh God. May we listen to your voice. May we speak to you without hesitation. Hold us in the palm of your hands. Our personal prayers we bring before you. Our collective offerings we bring before the throne. Accept us as we are. May our gathering cause you delight and may we be obedient children. Our world faces so many crises and turmoils, wars that we create, natural disasters that are beyond our control, but pain and suffering is real. The magnitude of the losses is huge. We ask for your blessing. We ask for your comfort. We ask for your strength. We also lift up those who minister to those in need, particularly Madison Avenue Christian Church. We thank you for guiding us in the past continue to guide us always. For those in hospitals, people who are recovering at home, we offer our prayers. We join with those who ask for a miracle in their lives. Continue to move among us, O oh living God. Startle us by your presence. Hear us even now. As we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture comes from John chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and so Jesus, wearied as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank from it himself, and his sons, and his cattle? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but those who drink but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband, and this you said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God in spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will show us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but none said, What do you wish? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the city and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the, the disciples besought him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. For the, the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him food? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? I tell you, lift up your eyes and see how the fields are already white for harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the, the saying holds true. 
One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believe in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me that he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of your words that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. This is the word of the Lord.
when I saw that scripture and it was 42 verses I looked at Rachel and said who's reading <laughs> she said Gary I said good let the chair of elders suffer some today <laughs> Last week, a good friend of mine was worshipping with us online and he said, true, he gets us, that is a profound statement. But the real question is, do we get him? Do we get Jesus? And I thought for a moment and it became very clear to me. The heart of today's scripture is exactly that. She gets him. She gets Jesus. And I hope to unpack that story for us today. Jesus is coming through Samaria and there's a woman by the well and it is high noon. And the woman is astonished seeing Jesus. Why? Number one, Jesus being a kosher Jew should not be in Samaria country. A few years ago I even had that map on screen to show you how a Jew who wanted to go to Jerusalem would not cut through Samaria which is the direct path would go around because it was told to them that Samaritans are lesser people with their religiosity. You know how that goes, right? It's even today, it just packages itself in so many different ways and pops up in every propaganda instrument you can find. Lesser people because of what they believe and who they are. But not Jesus. Jesus cuts through Samaria. Not only that, this woman is at the well at high noon. Why? You know about those water fountain gossip times. Water holes are dangerous places. That is where people stand and talk about, do you know what they're doing? Are you, you know about this? Yeah. Did you know where they were yesterday? It's gossip time. And the well was the best place for gossip. And people went to the well either early in the morning or later in the evening because high noon is too hot. Nobody goes to the well. And this woman conveniently avoids the time when most people go to the well. She comes at high noon because she knows nobody would be at the well. And if nobody's at the well, she does not have to answer half a dozen questions. That can become a whole story in itself. That is why she comes to the well at high noon and she sees Jesus and she says what are you doing here I didn't expect anybody to hear moreover you're a Jew what are you doing in Samaria little does she know that Jesus will show up when there's a need even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death I have no fear but thou art with me there isn't a place that is a place where you cannot summon Jesus. The deepest, darkest time or Vegas time. 
He is there when people call upon his name. And there was Jesus and they engage into this conversation and this woman has come there with her big water jar. I want you to pay attention to that water jar because that water jar interprets the story best. So here is somebody who wanted to hide from everybody. She did not want to be part of the gossip crowd. She did not want to be the object of ridicule. And they engage into a conversation and uh, John's gospel goes into torturous narration of that conversation. I was reading that and going, John, we know you'll be coming to that point anyhow. You'll be coming to the point because you stand alone in how the Gospels tell the story of Jesus. You will before long say that Jesus is the living water. Jesus is the word that became flesh to dwell among us. Jesus is God in the form of flesh. You're going to say that why all this dialogue? But I have to. It goes on. She is still talking in terms of water. Jesus is talking about living water. And then they engage into the story about her life. And there comes that moment. She says, give me that water. And Jesus says, I am that living water. The next thing you know, she drops that jar right there and runs home. I want you to focus on that part. Folks, you and I are not ready to receive the living water that Christ offers until we drop the jars we carry around that burdens us so much and causes us to cling on to the past and cling on to our own ways so that we can move from there and cling on to God's ways. What am I talking about? Hang in there. She dropped that jar and ran home. The moment she dropped that jar and started heading home, she was a new creation. How? One interesting point. I don't want to finish the sermon so soon. <laughs> One interesting point. How that story is structured be between Nicodemus and this woman. Nicodemus comes in the middle of the night and has an encounter with Jesus. This woman has an encounter with Jesus at high noon. Nicodemus is a well-educated person. This woman is too. Look at that conversation that goes on between Jesus and this woman. Well, about Jacob's well and where people should worship. That is intricate theological conversation they are having. The woman drops the jar and runs back to her home. And she is a new creation. How? It is the same woman who wanted to come to the well high noon because she does not have to encounter anybody. She does not have to talk to people who will put her down, tear her apart, and tell her she's unwanted. When she hears a door open in the complex where she lived, she shut her door and went in. Because the world outside was torturous, unbearable. Not anymore. That is why she's a new creation. 
to you and I yesterday when the presence of being born again and we said we need to grow in Christ she gets it that the world would not have the last word she's a new creation <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> the one who came to the well high noon the one who locked herself in when other doors open now she's knocking at doors she wants to talk to people she wants to tell people something she wants to tell people I met Jesus who is the source of living water I am a new creation because Jesus has given me joy in my life and I'm going to share it I am the person whom Jesus said you're not just anybody you're a child of living God don't believe what the world tells you don't believe what you think of yourself either she is a new creation born again to claim to be born again means there is something that is coming out of you that is not what this world offers it is God's gift that has been placed in you church what is our born again story people of faith what is your born again story are we willing to look in and see that spark that Christ has placed in each and every one of us? Or are we letting that jar rule and govern our world and we are limited by what that jar offers us do you know every day she would see that jar and that defined her life it would it would tell her this is where you can go this is whom you avoid this is what you do and this is how you feel about yourself not anymore she dropped that jar that jar does not dictate who she is she truly believes in the promise of God that says I am the bread of life I am the living water it is not enough to make a bumper sticker out of it it, it is an invitation to live out of that promise to live out of that promise and there she was the one whom everybody rejected now is the bearer of the good news of Jesus Christ. Newfound courage, a vision glorious, and there she is. You and I cannot experience the joy of Christ. The church cannot experience the joy of Christ if we do not have joy to spread you cannot have a laughter that is a gift from God if you cannot create laughter you cannot be fed till you want no more until otherwise you become God's instrument of peace in the world you cannot pray you cannot pray until you get to the point that says Christ never fails blessed assurance Jesus is mine to God be honor power glory and majesty now and forevermore Amen
seated. Relationships can be built in so many ways. One of which is through the giving of our time, talent, and treasure. Let us pray as we dedicate the gifts. Dear gracious and loving God, we give thanks for the abundant, sometimes undeserving gifts you have bestowed upon us. And as we now give back and offer up our gifts to you, we ask that our gifts be blessed. May we give joy joyfully and freely to those who ask without judgment of who they are and without question of how they will use it. We also ask that our gifts be used to build relationships and seeking to do your work. May your will be done as we move forward in being the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a boy. That's how my story at Mac started over 60 years ago. I was a Baptist, attending a Baptist church, having gone to church since birth. So I met this boy, and we began a relationship. As the relationship progressed, we learned that both of us attended church regularly. So that we could be together more, we decided to alternate Sundays at each other's church. Things continued to progress and an engagement ensued. One day I said, 
We need to decide upon one church before we marry. Before there was a, even any discussion, I said, and I choose yours. I fell in love with this church from the very beginning. Its people and the disciples' theology. So I became a member here, and the real journey began. I felt immediately accepted and jumped right into the life at Mac. Everyone was so welcoming. Me, with my distinctive style of clothes, <laughs> which has never changed. You may not have noticed that about me. I affectionately call them my costumes. I truly believe I could put a real dent in the cost of the roof and the elevator if I had a dollar for every time Paula or Sherry said to me, you're wearing that. <laughs> I had always participated in the planning and organization of the groups at my former church, even as a teen. And that continued seamlessly here at Mac. I joined the choir almost immediately. Still in my young adult years, I remember Carl Kepler asked me to be a committee chair. Me, the new kid on the block, and I was on cloud nine. I had really become part of my church. From the very first committee, I started making friends and developing relationships with many of you old and young. I have continued over the years adding to my relationships with so many of you and holding more positions than I can even remember. The years have whizzed by and I have never regretted the choice I made to be here. This is where I truly am supposed to be. I believe with all my heart I would not be standing here today if it hadn't been for my fat Mac family. Almost exactly seven years ago, I went through a serious medical event. As I was just becoming aware of my surroundings, on the way from surgery to the ICU, I opened my eyes, looked up, to see Simon standing over me in the middle of the night. My first thought was, oh, this can't be good. <laughs> I was told what had happened in my condition. It is hard to put into words my emotions, but I never truly felt anxious or afraid. A peace came over me that I had never had before, and I knew all was fine, whatever I would face. There, was an, it, there never was a doubt. It had to be my church family praying for my recovery. Thank you. I am so grateful, more than you can ever know. So, here I am. All I can say is, be careful what you pray for. My story is still going on, and you still have to deal with me. But this brings me to what I have discovered about relationships. You know, relationships are a funny thing. Some last a lifetime, some are short, some are treasured, some not so much, some are good, some are bad, some are even toxic. But I have discovered there is nothing, there is something to always be learned from each relationship, whether it be good or not so good. For myself, if it's rewarding, 
If it feeds you in positive ways, if there is give and take between you, then reflect on what makes it good. Use those things when building new relationships. If a relationship drains you, takes away your joy, if you've done your best to repair it, you may need to walk away and maybe revisit it another time. Of course, the most important relationship each of us could possibly have is the one we have with our Lord and Savior. Do we work as hard on that relationship as we do with our earthly ones? Do we live up do we give up when things are not going the way we think they should? Even when we've prayed and things don't seem to improve, do we give up on God? I can't tell you I have all the answers. I can only tell you my story. I can tell you that throughout my story, through all the good and not so good times, one of my favorite hymns, It Is Well With My Soul, says it all for me. Each of us has our own story to tell. So as each of us comes to this table today, as we are right now, remember the ultimate sacrifice Jesus made for us. Let that be your focus. And trust in your God that everything else will take care of itself. The gifts of God for the people of God. Welcome to our Lord's Table. In the book that my Sunday school class is discussing during Lent, there was a passage that caused me to realize something that had never occurred to me before. When we are served the communion cup and the bread, no matter what our status in the church, our title, or anything else that defines us. 
Each one comes equally to the table. No one receives a larger portion. Each one is welcomed the very same way. Let us give thanksgiving for this meal. O oh God of all who accepts each of us as we see the bread and cup on your table, we give thanks for all you give us. Help us to remember we are called to share bread with those who need bread for bodily nourishment, but also those who need nour spiritual nourishment. As we drink the cup that represents your life-giving blood, give us opportunities to share our stories in your name. These things we ask in the name of your Son. Amen. Hear now the words of institution from the Gospel of Luke. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Let us drink the cup together. Now is the time in our service that we invite any of you that have been visiting to join with us and be a part of us and start your own story with us. We ask that you would come forward during the singing of the last hymn or if you prefer you could speak at another time with Simon or one of the elders. Let us sing. during the day that clamors for our attention. Friends, family, work, classes, household tasks, and the noise. We are bombarded with sound from the clock that awakens us to the telephone, the radio, the television, the screaming children. Where is the time and place to listen for the still, small voice of God? Sometimes it seems that God would have to speak in a whirlwind to be heard over the clamor. Listen now. There is a place of quiet rest, and it is the place where God dwells within you. Be aware of that place. In Lent, we journey to the parts of ourselves known only to God, beneath the clamor, let the story of Jesus reach us there. Seek that place where, God, where the Lord resides within you. Let it teach us wisdom in our secret hearts. 
As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and the pain of violence in the world and to the earth. Let us pray. Draw us together in your love, O God. May our restless hearts not resist you, but continue to search until they find their rest in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.